Got us some Pompano candy goodness. We got goofy silly jigs and teasers in here, you guys. All right, so I chose a white teaser and a pink and white goofy jig. You can use whatever colors you want. Guys, they make these goofy jigs in a lot of different weights and sizes, okay? Depending on the current, that will determine the weight of the jig that you're gonna use. If the current is barely moving, you might be throwing a 3 8 ounce jig. If the current is medium fast, you might be throwing a half. And if it's really ripping pretty good, you might be throwing a 3 quarter ounce or a 1 ounce goofy jig. The idea is to keep it on the bottom. And then we've got the teaser, and these guys just come in multiple colors, okay? Um, I don't know. Uh, pink, pink and white jig worked really well for me with a yellow teaser, but then again I was using a green and white jig with a uh, pink teaser, and I caught them too. But listen guys, this rig I'm going to show you, this is what's worked for me. There are a lot of different ways to rig. Everybody has their own special method, but I've been catching the heck out of Pompano and Jacks and Mackerel with this rig. So let me show you how I'm doing this. I take the fly. This is braided line for this demonstration, but you want this to be monofilament or fluorocarbon leader. I usually use like six to eight feet on my leader because uh, I always do a lot of re-rigging and I just don't want to have to tie on a new leader all the time. Some guys are just fishing like straight monofilament and fluorocarbon down there for Pompano. But anyway, this would be fluorocarbon or monofilament. Here's the teaser fly. We're going to run that through on your, your leader line and I'm going to pull that teaser fly up about 12 to 14 inches. Probably 14 inches is a good place, place to start with this. Okay, once I get it up there, I'm going to double the line over like that. I'm going to pull it back and about probably, I'd say that's five inches right there. And then I'm going to create a loop. Just wrap it around my finger like that. Okay, and then this is a, a, a three granny knot loop, a three overhand knot loop, or a three loop surgeon's knot. Okay, but I've got that loop and then I pass the teaser fly through there three times. One, two, three. Passed it through there, and now I'm just gonna gently pull that knot together like that. And the idea here, pull it tight, is to get from the knot to the fly about an inch and a half to two inches. It could actually be, you know, larger or shorter than that. And that's the way that I tie that teaser fly on there, okay? Now, you guys, I have not had a knot break right here on a mackerel, a pompano, or a jack. Um, right here, you see, see right there at the end where the teaser fly would be? That's the highest stress point right there. And so after I've caught, you know, several fish and got hung up on rocks and stuff like that, I have had that teaser fly break right there because that's the greatest point of stress on there so it's important to remember to, to re-rig this every now and then especially if you're catching fish and getting hung up all right so that's that's how i tie that teaser fly on there you guys so now from the teaser fly knot i've got at least 12 inches to the end so this way i can i can adjust the length from the jig i'm going to thread this jig on there i can adjust the length from the jig however close to the teaser fly that i want it okay some people are tying on two and three teaser flies with a jig. Some people tie on two jigs. It, you know, there are just a lot of different ways that people rig this, but this rig is working for me. All right, so I'm going to bring this to about probably six, six inches from six to eight inches from where that fly is. And then I just tie this jig on with an improved clinch knot. All right, so you guys who are fishermen out there, you know how this knot goes. Some people might not. But you just wrap this line around six to eight times. I just keep my finger in there creating a, a loop like that. Once I've wrapped that around like that, I take the tag in, I pass it through this loop, and then the loop that gets created, I pass it back through. So I pass it through that loop, and now I've created this other loop. And I bring that tag in back through that other loop. And that is an improved clinch knot which is better than <laughs> the clinch knot. Okay, I always tie an improved clinch knot and uh, it's just a lot stronger, you guys. So if you've been tying just the clinch knot, do that little extra pull through on there and make it an improved knot and you'll have a lot better success with your knot holding.
so that's that's my rig right there you guys that's what i've been catching these pompano on and it's been working for me like i said i'm i'm not an expert pompano fisherman you guys there are a lot of different ways that people rig one guy suggested that on this this bottom one where i have the jig he said why don't you just go ahead and use the jig that already has the teaser he says that way you've got the teaser up here on the main line and then on the bottom he says you've got two hooks you have a better chance of getting hooked up with a pompano if they hit the jig i've seen other people rig up with a jig here and a jig here and i've seen other people rig up with a jig and a teaser here and a jig and a teaser here so you guys experiment with whatever's going to work for you this is what has been working for me and like i said i made this video because a lot of you guys have been asking about how i've been rigging i am not an expert pompano fisherman but i'm having a whole bunch of fun catching pompano you guys all right well you guys thanks for watching this video get out there and go fishing man life is fun live it see ya